Hi everyone. Uh, chapter six goes into mechanisms, uh, electron pushing with curvy arrows, and um, we covered a lot of that with resonance structures. So I'm going to go ahead and show you those when we get to chapter seven. But remember that they're here in chapter six of the Klein textbook. So you can go back to that and practice that if you need to. Uh, I want to jump into something called carbocations. Carbocations are carbon cations. So if you recall, carbon has three bonds and it could have, um, it has sp. <coughs> carbon has, uh, when it's sp2 hybridized, it can make three sigma bonds. And it has this p orbital that could be empty or full. If it's empty, then that means carbon has a positive charge. So here's carbocation, which is a flat planar, trigonal planar, sp2 hybridized carbon. If carbon, by the way, has the orbital that's full, then this will rehybridize into an sp3 um, carbon, and that's called a carbanion. And I'll just write it over here for future reference. So here's carbanion. Um, and so these are two different uh, ways that carbon can be charged um, that you usually see. Back to carbocation. Uh, carbocations are generally pretty unstable because carbon does not have an octet. So carbon's got different uh, either hydrogen or R groups here. Um, and depending on how many R groups there are, this positive charge can be stabilized. Now we talked about induction a bit. When you have R groups that have electron density that can be pulled inward toward this positive charge, you can start to partially fill that. So by induction, uh, it helps to stabilize carbocations. So the more R groups there are, the more stable the carbocation can be. So we see that here, as we increase potential energy, these are the highest potential energy. They have the least R groups next to this carb carbocation. So one way to think about this series here is to count how many R groups there are around the carbon. So for this carbon, there are no R groups. So we call this a methyl cation. And you can see why, because this is a methyl group, CH3. For this one, we'll highlight how many carbons are attached to the positive charge. The positive charged carbon is here, and it's got one R group. So we call this a primary. And this one will be called secondary, and this one will be called tertiary. Of this series here, these are the alkyl um, carbocations. Uh, these, uh, you'll notice that there's a little tr railroad tracks here. What that means is the scale is sort of broken. So these are really off the chart with very high increased potential energy compared to these. So I'm just gonna add a note here that we would try to avoid forming primary and methyl cations at all costs. So these typically uh, do not form because they all have a high activation energy of formation. Now notice in my chart I also included a few other kinds of carbocations which involve pi electrons. So here I've got a set of pi electrons uh, and we'll see how that works to uh, stabilize the carbocation. Notice that this series is more stable than this series based on increasing energy going to the right. So uh, let's label these as primary, secondary, and tertiary. And let's use this term called allylic, which means um, double bond is next to the car is on the carbon next to the car carbocation. And I want to ask you guys a question, which is why do you think these having the double bond right here in this position makes it more stable than this version here, which we call aliphatic? Uh, so no double bonds, no unsaturation. Um, and over here, we have a positive charge on a double bond, and that is called vinyl. So this is an example of a um, secondary vinyl. Vinyl means the positive charge is on the double bonded carbon. So why do you think these are so special and so much better than this one? Well, maybe some of you guys can see that there's resonance stabilization here as this double bond moves over. I'll just draw it for this last one here. You could draw a resonance structure 
where you move that positive charge or see how that positive charge is actually spread out um, over uh, several carbons. So here, instead of having the positive charge localized right here, it's actually that the double bond is spread out. These pi electrons are spread out. And so that positive charge is also spread out. So you see it here or here, but the idea is that it's spread out over this whole region. So the allylic series is stabilized by resonance. And I do want to point that out for the benzylic series as well. Benzylic means you are carbocation or you are anything that's one carbon away from the ring and not directly on the ring. So, so let's label these primary benzylic, secondary benzylic, and tertiary benzylic. And these are all stabilized by resonance as well. So when we look over here, if you are a positive charge on the ring, that's called aryl. And if you're an aryl carbocation, then that means that uh, your positive charge is on an sp2 carbon. And let's see what's so unstable about that. Okay, when I redraw the orbital diagram of the secondary vinyl over here, and then I draw the aryl vinyl, the aryl cation over here. Um, and I'm going to draw in my positive charge. We're putting it right on that carbon. It's got a full pi electron. So you're putting that positive charge or you're making the empty orbital the sp2 orbital here. So each of these has an sp2 orbital because uh, the, the p orbital that's not hybridized is occupied by making the double bond. So when you do that, then you have an sp2 orbital that's empty versus the p orbital that's empty. And if you remember, who's closer to the nucleus? The sp2 orbitals are closer to the nucleus. So putting a positive charge in a region that's closer to a positively charged nucleus means that you're going to have more repulsion than putting it in a p orbital or even an sp3 orbital. So um, that for those reasons, we definitely don't want positive charge on sp2 carbons. So these, in general, this nice little collection right here, we don't want to form. Oh, forgot my M. Do not form right here, okay? So we want to avoid those when we can. So quick little review. Uh, go ahead and tell me um, uh, which ones are the most stable and which ones are the least stable in each of these series. All right, so it takes a little bit of time for people to get used to how to identify these, but I like to highlight the R groups, and that helps remind me. Uh, so this is tertiary, secondary, and primary. So in this order, tertiary is more stable than secondary, is more stable than primary. For these guys here, I would say you have primary, which is the least stable, and then secondary is better than that, but secondary benzylic is even better than secondary because I'm one next to the ring, um, I can then have resonance structures. And I didn't show you that before, but I can have resonance structures like this. Let's go ahead and practice drawing out those resonance structures right up here, okay? So I'm gonna give you a chance. Go ahead and draw this benzylic cation, and let's practice drawing all the resonance structures. There should be three of them that you can draw. Go ahead and go for it right now. All right, guys, so here are my resonance structures of this benzylic carbocation down here, which happens to be secondary. Uh, so you see that I move the pi electrons here, showing that there's positive charge character on this carbon. I did the same here, showing the positive charge on this carbon, and then over here as well. So how to look at this, mo this ion is actually that the positive charge is spread out around the ring. So it's not just localized to here, but it's also here, here, and here. So the, the positive charge is actually spread out. And that helps to stabilize and lower the energy of this ion. Now, I mentioned up here that we don't like to form carbocations if they're too high in energy. So these are very slow to form, and so we could just treat them as if they don't form. But if you happen to see one, uh, there's something that can happen to stabilize it, and that's called rearrangement. I can rearrange a primary into a secondary, and that's going to have, uh, and that's going to be much lower in energy than forming, keeping it a primary. 
So let me show you that idea with this first example from Klein. So here's a secondary carbocation. And whenever you see a neighboring position, I'll highlight them, okay? So I have this position and this position. And if it were possible for me to have a positive charge on a neighboring position that would make it more stable, then I can do a rearrangement, meaning I can swap with my neighbor so my positive charge can end up on the more stable carbon. So here we see this is secondary here. And here we have a tertiary. And basically what I'm saying is instead of having a secondary here, some energy can be used into breaking a neighboring hydrogen or methyl group and or alkyl group of some kind, even a phenyl, okay? And you can shift that over, causing a positive charge over here. Let me show you how to do that. That's called a carbocation rearrangement. First, I'm gonna take a hydrogen because if I take a methyl group or if I move the ring, uh, if I take a methyl group, I'm going to be secondary over here. So that's the same as what I am now. If I take the ring over here, I'm going to end up with secondary here and a five-membered ring. So first thing I do is I draw the hydrogen that I plan to move over to here. And that's going to help satisfy my octet over here. I'm going to draw that arrow from the middle of this bond because I'm breaking it. So from the middle of that bond to this carbon because I'm going to move that bond over to carbon. So here's that skeleton here. So that's sort of a good start is just doing that. And then if I move my hydrogen over here, that means now I'm empty over here. So I've got this extra spot that is empty. So this is positively charged now and I have a tertiary. And so this is called a one two hydride shift. And I say hydride instead of hydrogen ion because it's, a neg it's thought of as this hydrogen taking its negative charge with it, taking its electrons with it. And that's a hydride, which is H minus, H with a lone pair and a minus charge. Okay, so for the rest of these, I'd like you to go ahead and determine, do any of these rearrange? Are there any positions nearby that will give you more stability? And it, for now, let's assume that it just goes next door and not farther down the chain. So for example, let's say that this doesn't move here and here and here and all the way around. Let's just say that because it involves bond breaking, there's not this unlimited energy supply that will allow multiple although it depends on factors and we do see rearrangements happening farther down the chain in real life but for now let's say it's more probable if it's close by and it only involves one um, bond breaking okay so here we are with um, the rest of these so here we have tertiary and tertiary so even with a shift you're still going to get tertiary so we would say there's no rearrangement even though that might be occurring um, and then here, because there's no net change, and then here we have a 1,2 methyl shift that gets us to a tertiary center, but it's not just tertiary, it's allylic, tertiary allylic due to resonance. So tertiary allylic is more stable than tertiary. And we know that from here, tertiary allylic is more stable than tertiary. And by the way, something I didn't mention, um, primary, secondary, tertiary, Primary allylic is about the same or maybe a little bit more stable than secondary. Secondary allylic is a little more stable than tertiary. And um, primary benzylic, a little bit more stable than secondary allylic in general. I mean, there's exceptions to that based on what else is attached, but, um, but use, this, use this chart sort of as a guide to knowing how to compare those. But tertiary allylic, definitely more stable than just regular tertiary. Here, secondary everywhere, so no rearrangement. And then here we have a hydride shift giving us a tertiary, so there's the rearrangement. And here's a methyl shift rearrangement. And here we have a primary going to a benzylic with a hydride shift. So um, your job then is to be able to review carbocations, uh, which ones are better than others in terms of stability and be able to draw resonance structures to explain the stability of having nearby pi electrons. And then also be able to look at a carbocation and think to yourself, is there a rearrangement here that could occur? And that's gonna help you in the future chapter.